Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Viking Season 6, Episode 2. This was the second part of a two-part premiere. Episode 1 is already up on my channel, so this is part 2. I'm gonna save all of my thoughts for after the episode, all of my thoughts from Episode 1 and this episode, because this was a two-part premiere. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into Episode 2. <gasps> Floki? Floki? Yeah! <gasps> I was wondering, I was gonna address that in episode one. We didn't see one second of Floki. Oh, that's not Floki. What's the Floki update? Tell me, was it a success? It was a great struggle for all of us. I am here to see Bjorn. My brother's not a king, so I have heard. I would like to talk about this further. Would you meet me later in the Great Hall? Is it true that Oh, this guy. This guy has done some shit. Is it true that these people were the first people to kind of occupy Iceland? Because I did not know that. Like, I didn't know that they literally named Iceland, Iceland. This happened with King Harold. This brought my... Konyazi Shkoreya Pikuriti Konyazi Oleji. Uvasun Milos to Prosote. Why are you called the Prophet? I attacked Constantinople, defeated its defenders, and subdued it. Afterwards, I was invited to dine with its rulers to make peace. I dreamed that my wine was poisoned. So, <laughs> I refused to drink it. But two of my commanders did drink and died in the greatest agony soon afterwards. From that moment, I was called the Prophet. Is it true, as I have been told, that you plan to invade Scandinavia? Of course. I've been considering it for some time. Hmm. After all, we will only take back what is rightly ours. I hope you recognize that as your brother, I stand ready and waiting for your commands. You can trust me. Of course. <laughs> My dear brother. No. Nah. All right. When you say you can trust me, and you have that kind of Conquest. smirk on your face, no, 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 no. Conquest. Why do I have a feeling that the wine is poisoned? He didn't drink the wine. Is he okay? Oh no. Holy shit! No, 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 no. Yeah. Whew. It's been a long day. I have a question now. Poisoned though, do they not think to like try to make themselves throw it up or no? I've always wondered this. I guess it just depends on the type of poison too. I saw Shadow Flatnose. He said that Floki became disenchanted with their new life and that he just disappeared without warning. I want to see him, damn it. Shadow also told me that the wanderer who saw the uninhabited land further to the west, his name is Otea, and he lives in Iceland. I told him that we would step back with him so that I can meet with this out there. That's good news? Mm. Yes. Thank you for your gift, Super. That now flat nose motherfucker. To sacrifice, so Bad news, bears. The gods can bless this new world. Why did you have to kill your brother? Because this child belongs to me. He's just a child. No. He's the heir. He's the only legitimate heir. To control him is to possess the only keys to the kingdom. That's such a sad life for this little kid. I told you I can't in it. Zamal Chita. By Dimitri. Like being groomed your whole life just to be king and make decisions that you probably don't want to make. What is happening? That fucking sucks. Seems like we have visitors. Brother, why are you please, Esti? Another brother? Seems like he wants to talk to us. 
Well, just invite him in for dinner and give him some wine then. Get it over with at least. This is Karoliver Peskosnik. Varega. Varega? No matter how often you wash your hands, they still have our brother's blood on them. Of course, you can still avoid catastrophe. Hand over the boy. You and the cripple can leave. And I know that unless you give me and kill Ivor and Prince Vicar free passage back to Kiel, then something very terrible will happen to you. You have two hours to hand over the boy unharmed. Otherwise, I will proceed as I suggested. You're not going to do that. Brother. So cool. It looks like he's actually playing it too. I mean, I don't know if he is, but that's pretty awesome if he was. Beautiful. Ivar? Ivar's like the only person that really gives this kid the time of day. Ivar's a good babysitter, actually. Where are my children? Ali! Elsa! Oh, come here! It's good to see you. Uba? Yeah. Toby? Hello, Bill. The children are always a credit to you. And Uba? And of course, Uba. Uh. Come. You're a master builder, Heavy. I am. <laughs> Let's go inside. <sighs> My side, unless you release the figure of us unharmed, then in a day or so, a terrible thing will happen to you. I don't believe you. We don't really have second sight. I think maybe you should believe him. What has this to do with you? Nothing. Everything. I recently got married. In secret. The identity of my wife is only known to a few trusted servants. But I assume... that you know. I know your wife's name. I know everything. You don't know her name. Anna. Her name is Anna. You were married at the church of St. Magnus Martin here in Nokar. Oh, shit. I believe this is the lady in question. <gasps> it's like magic. Order the warriors to stand down. Prince Oleg and his party should be untroubled when they leave. I don't need to harm your wife, Anna. Come. Come. You have the boy. You don't need to see me again. But we are family. Family is important. Dear. We should stay in touch. I forgot to say goodbye to the cripple. I've decided to answer King Harold's cry for help. I think you're crazy. You're fucking crazy, dude. Who are you to talk? Uh, I'm sure that doesn't matter to you. Damn, I can't believe what they did with Bitzerk's character. It's a bold move. You never found a body. <laughs> what do you suppose happened to him? I don't know. How should they know? I have a feeling you know a lot more than you admit. So here's what I suggest. I'm raising an army. Join me. Forget about your settlement in Iceland for a while and come with me. Of course, you're always free to say no. Go on your way. But that would make me even more suspicious. I will go with you, Bjorn Ironside. This guy's weird. Is that it? No. All righty. Can I just say that I'm impressed? I have been, I don't know what the general consensus is on these first two episodes, but I have thoroughly enjoyed 
both episodes. I enjoyed episode one, and I think I enjoyed episode two even more. Um, I think a large part of that is the fact that I really like Prince um, Oleg. I really like him. I enjoy his character. I'm not sure what the actor's name is, but I just enjoy his back and forth with Ivar. And I think that both of them are kind of, um, they're supposed to parallel each other, and that's very evident. Um, Ivar's been doing like these magic tricks with the little, the little prince, I forget what his name was. Um, Ivar was performing little magic tricks to him throughout the episode. And then, you know, Oleg himself is called the prophet. He has these kind of like magical type of powers where he knows things that physically he wouldn't like be able to know without, without physically traveling somewhere. So with the whole thing at the, so with the whole thing at the end where he just made his brother's wife appear, that was kind of a magic trick in itself. Now, I don't know if they did that on purpose, but it's clear that him and Ivar not only have this partnership, but they're starting to become friends now. Ivar really respects him. Ivar's like, okay, I kind of see a little bit of myself in him or a little bit of him in myself. Both of them are pretty ruthless and savage. They don't really care of what, you know, what they look like to other people when they do these horrible things. I mean, this episode, Oleg literally killed his brother and he was threatening to kill his other brother and his other brother's wife. I'm not sure what his brother's names were, but he literally poisoned his brother in front of his nephew. So that's some pretty fucked up shit. I feel really bad for the nephew, forgot what his name was, but he is clearly gonna be a, I guess he's gonna be a crucial character because they keep on focusing on him and Ivar's relationship. So Ivar's apparently good with kids. Maybe, maybe because Ivar, you know, lost his chance of being a father. Maybe he looks at this kid like he's his own son. I don't know if that's a stretch, but maybe that's the reason why they kind of have this bond and Ivar really has taken a liking to him because he's kind of like, he wants to be a father figure. I don't know. That's kind of how I've been analyzing it, but I don't know. I'm just excited to see what the future holds with Ivar's whole storyline. I'm just so into it. Last season, I wasn't really into his whole storyline with him claiming to be a god and all of that, or at least towards the latter half of the, the season. But this season, I'm, I'm fully, I'm down for the ride. And I think a lot of that has to do with Oleg and how you know charismatic he is on screen and how, how into it I am. Another thing I wanted to address was the whole Floki situation. Where's Floki? What is happening with Floki? I don't even remember the last time we saw Floki. I truly don't remember. I just remember everything that happened with the whole settlement. The The guy that came to uh, Kattegat is um, Flatnose, right? And he was the one that fucking, he went ape shit. So I don't trust him for a second. I don't think Yuren trusts him for a second. But that, that was what we were seeing at the end of this episode, that he didn't trust him. Um, speaking of Bjorn, I've been liking Bjorn a lot more this season too. I mean, I know it's only been two episodes, but I have a good feeling about this season. Bjorn has just been impressing me because you could really see that he doesn't want to make some of these decisions and he doesn't really want to assume the entire power of being king, but he doesn't really have a choice. He's king, everybody listens to him, and he has to make some of these decisions that are rough. And we saw that this episode when he was debating whether or not to help go help Harold. Um, he, he decided ultimately that he's gonna go help him, but Ubo was even saying, you know, I don't know what choice I would make, but I'm just glad that I don't have to make the choice. I'm glad that it's not me in that position and I don't have to make that choice. So I thought that was really interesting and I, I agree. I mean, I don't think Bjorn is really suited to make the choices either. I don't think that it's one person that needs to make all these decisions that it's just so so much power for one person to have. So to have a kind of like an advisory, like a little committee like that is really important. So hopefully Bjorn doesn't get too power hungry and let the power go to his head. I really hope that doesn't happen. I hope that he keeps on taking the considerations and advice from his family, you know, his little advisory team. But now Uba, speaking of Uba, he's going to go get Floki and a, this wanderer that they've been talking about. Don't know what's gonna happen there. I'm just curious, I wanna see Floki. It's been two episodes. This is the final season 
and if we don't get Floki by next episode, I will be pissed off. I'm not gonna lie. His his storyline the past season has not been the most well received by everybody. It started to ramp up a little bit in intensity towards the end of the season, but at the end of the day, there wasn't really. We weren't really given the payoff that we expected that we were going to get. Was it enjoyable for me? Yeah, I still enjoyed it. I still liked it. It's Vikings. I don't think that I have ever not liked something Vikings related. It's just such a fun show to me. But at the end of the day, was Floki's storyline a little boring? Yes, I'm not going to lie about that. But if we do get to see him next episode and it starts to kind of everybody's storyline starts to combine and they start getting things moving a little bit, I think that I will be really into his storyline. I just want to know where he is right now and what his purpose is going to be for the rest of the show, because right now he has none. But yeah, I guess my predictions, my final thoughts, I'm going to predict that Ivar and Oleg, their friendship is going to grow, grow stronger and I'm going to end up liking Oleg. I think Oleg's going to be the MVP this season. I think I'm really gonna like him. As far as everything else, I just hope that that little prince survives a little bit longer. I enjoy seeing him and Ivar interact because it's kind of the only time that we see Ivar not being like a little sarcastic piece of shit, you know, a little evil motherfucker. So I'm just glad that we have a character that brings that out of Ivar. The last character that we saw brought that out of Ivar was Freitas, but that was a very different type of relationship. He ended up killing her. So. Hopefully this relationship does not end that way. I don't think it will. But yeah, let me know you guys thought in the comments below. I'm actually very curious to see if you guys have been liking the first two episodes of this season. Um, I want to know what the general consensus is. As always, thank you guys for watching. Check out my other reactions if you have not already. And I will see you guys for episode three. Alright, bye guys.